joining us via the phone is Bolan Ledger there. Many thanks for joining us, Bolan. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to you. Some have argued that uh, we see those we know being diagnosed with this virus. It somehow doesn't strike home. Would you agree that the recent diagnosis of some of our leaders is, in a strange way, making coronavirus more real to the everyday man? Um, I, I, I believe so, in a way. Um, but it's also in a very sad way. Because what I observed were people literally, some people literally rejoicing. Um, that some highly placed people um, were diagnosed with, uh, with this uh, disease, uh, the virus. Um, I, I don't think that is what we seek to achieve. What we seek to achieve is for everybody to get conscious and to know that it could be them so that we can all together be each, each other's uh, savior in a way by, by, by avoiding this, this virus. Now, does this in any way, does it reinforce the impression that coronavirus is a rich man's disease, since it is mainly those who have traveled abroad that seem to be featuring as index cases? Of course it does. It does. Um, all, literally all the cases we have were people who traveled, who have been abroad in the last few weeks, or people who came in contact with them. So it, it tends to reinforce the fact that, oh, it's a rich man's, uh, which is also still not good for us. Because everybody needs to be conscious that that rich man uh, gave us, he has security men, he has housemates, he has drivers. So, and within all this community, anybody could catch it and take it home to his own people. So we all have to be on our toes, and rather than seeing it as a rich man's, uh, rich man's uh, problem, see it as a poor Nigerian problem. There's also the so argument that... No problem for that much. Yes. Now, Bolan, there's also the argument that we're seeing more testing, and therefore the numbers are predictably increasing. Would it, would it not be useful for us to know just how many people have been tested at the same time as we're told of those who are tested positive? That is a very, very scary part of this thing. We are definitely not testing enough. Um, and, and, that, and that could be because we do not have the capacity to test a large number of people. Um, it's, it's, it's not a peculiar Nigerian peculiar problem, but I'm, I'm just hoping that now that we have received the donation from the, uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, billionaire, We'll be able to, you know, roll out a lot more testing. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that we are not doing enough, enough uh, testing, and that is why the numbers are as low as what we have today. Uh, all right. We're told that the challenge is said to be the cost and, and therefore the availability of these tests. Does this not then mean that the reality as concerns confirmed cases could be a much more um, disparate figure than the ones we're being told of? Definitely. The people, the people that already have the virus will be a lot more uh, than the, that the sample we have been able to test. There, there are some numbers uh, going around yesterday that we have probably tested less than 200 people. So it is from less than 200 people that we have gotten everything we got. So what will have happened if we have tested 10,000? We don't know. Now, why, why we commend the efforts of the NCDC for, for what they've been able to do so far uh, but are they not essentially faced with the same battle like that of David when he was confronted with Goliath, like a very acute tax before them? I, I, I don't think they've ever had to face something this big. Though, incidentally, last time people had actually killed more, more people. I have killed over 100 people. You know, but the, 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 the fear and panic that are associated with this virus Maybe, maybe because of the way he, he, he has this capacity to just take down a whole lot of people at the same time. You know, uh, uh, you, you have countries where over 700 people are dying in a single day. So it's a very scary thing to think about. CDC is struggling. They are struggling in every way. Well, I hope but beyond, I, we all know the agenda, Ben. Yes. Beyond social distancing and self-quarantine of returning citizens, 
What, what plans do you think we should begin to put in place to take us out of what seems to be like a code red situation? Since many are already rightfully concerned about the economic price tag associated with a shutdown. We need to do more citizens' education, more and more citizens' education. I'm delighted that even the radio station, the media houses, on their own, are already doing some of this thing without getting paid for it. You, you, I've been hearing all these, uh, all these uh, uh, adverts just saying this is from radio, so, 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 this is from so, so, so TV. So we need a lot more of that. We need people who go to the grassroots. And the funny thing is that we have the structure. There is a local government. There is councillor for each ward. How many local government councillors have gone to their ward to do sensitization, to go from house to house and tell them that COVID is real and it is not just a rich man's problem? We need to do a lot more of this. Right. Now, now we heard that Asu Rock is essentially on shutdown due to the setting key member of staff having been tested positive. What are the implications of this in the presidency? Uh, well, it's, a, it's a very serious matter. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that we are prepared for this. Uh, but having, 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 uh, it, it, it is what it is already. So there is, there's a need to quickly put together an emergency plan as to how things will run. You know, you, you can still run the government. I mean, we've had uh, other, other countries that face similar problems. You know, where president had to be literally quarantined. The president of Canada was literally quarantined. You know, for example, and he, he worked from he worked from home. So presidency need to also be able to put together a structure that allow people to be quarantined, but at the same time be able to work. There is telepresence. There is all forms of electronic presence that can be used to ensure that work continues to go on. Even in, in, the, in, the, in a quarantine situation. All right, but on, just before I let you go this morning, it, it seems like a, a, cl a close call home now to the presidency. But prior to this time, w would you say we've seen any commendable interventions from Asurok prior to now? Um, I, I, I would say not. Or rather, let me put it this way I would say we can do a whole lot more. We could have done a whole lot more. Than, than, than what we did. It took us a very long time, for example, even for the president to talk. We're not even saying the stimulus, or we're saying just to talk. If, if I were the president of Nigeria, that center where CDC broadcasts every day, I would have shown up there one day. It doesn't even require the, the, the COVID uh, speech that we, we had. I would show up there and just say, I just thank the guy. And it will make a whole lot because it shows that leadership has a buy-in and is conscious of it at the very top. It's psychological. When you see the president of China go to Wuhan wearing his face mask and waving at people through the window, he didn't talk. It wasn't even about the talk. It was merely symbolic. So we have not done enough in terms of citizens' education, uh, and, and our rollout, the testing rollout, we have not done enough. I, I just hope that whatever has happened uh, would ginger us to know that there is the, the, the danger is close home and is even close to the very top. All right, Maybe that will help us to do much more. Thank you very much, Belong Ledger, there for joining us this morning and for your contributions. You're welcome. Thank you.